Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I wanted to finally give you guys my thoughts on Season 3, where Battlefield 2042 is at overall, and try to answer the question, is it really worth your time, or indeed, money? Before we begin, it'd be awesome if you guys could hit that sub button so you don't miss out on any future Battlefield videos. We're about to cross into 38,000 subs and maybe even 40k by the end of the year, so let's see how far we can get. So Battlefield 2042 has been on sale on Steam. It's also free to play on Xbox's Game Pass Ultimate or with EA Play, which means a lot of you who haven't already purchased the game will now have the opportunity to try it out. And many of you already are. But is it even worth your time? I think I speak for most of us when I say that Battlefield 2042 is probably in the best shape it's ever been. And it no longer feels like it's littered with problems the way it did on release. That's not to say there aren't things that need changing or adding, and it's certainly not to say that it's one of the best Battlefield games of the series. But that doesn't mean you can't have any fun with it. The past three seasons have added some much needed content to the game. A bit of a critique of mine in season one and two was that whilst the content was good, there wasn't enough of it. And well, not much has changed on that front. In season three, we've got a single map spearhead, but it's absolutely gorgeous you can instantly see just by looking at it that a lot of love and time was poured into this map i do think 128 players is a little too much for how linear this map is you often end up with front lines forming in the outdoorsy part of the map and it becomes rather challenging to flank around or really push towards a flag without getting sniped by 100 railguns the two cube buildings are new unique objectives to fight over, with them being enterable from almost any angle, which really makes jumping in there and flanking the enemy a breeze. If anything, there's maybe a few too many angles inside of these objectives. Now, along with the new map, of course, there's the railgun tank. I haven't put too much time into this thing yet because I honestly die very easily. The railgun itself doesn't appear to have any splash damage, thus rendering it useless at killing infantry. So with its fast velocity, it's really thought of as more of a helicopter sniping tank thingy. At least that's what most people seem to be doing with it. So far for me, I get real gimmicky vibes from it, and I'm not sure many people will bother using it at all when the season wears on. Also, it's a tank, and tanks in 2042 are notorious for kind of sucking because of their painfully slow turret speed. Then of course there are three new weapons this time around, an improvement over the past two for previous seasons. There's the Roche Mark IV railgun, this initially appeared extremely overpowered at first, but after some considerable time spent playing with it, I've come to the conclusion that it's only really that effective as a sniper rifle. With the hefty charge up time, you really have to preempt your enemy with this weapon, and whilst it is very powerful, you only get 20 rounds. So, on the full auto mode, a lot of things can go wrong. You might not manage to charge it up in time to kill your opponent, you might miss too many rounds due to recoil and have to reload, or you might be reloading, which you will be doing a lot of with this weapon just when somebody slides around the next corner. However, if you are able to track heads with this thing, it is an absolute beast of a sniper rifle. Unfortunately for me, sniping in Battlefield has never really been my forte, but I'm sure Study is having a hell of a time. Overall, this weapon strikes me as a jack of all trades, master of none. You can speedily switch to a full auto mode, but it's never going to trump an assault rifle or an SMG that excels at that sort of gameplay. The new pistol, on the other hand, feels great. This one is unique in that you can set it to a two round burst. It feels very powerful, and I've been running it as my sidearm ever since I unlocked it. I haven't quite gotten my hands on the new shotgun yet, as it is quite high up in the battle pass, but if history is anything to go by, it's probably going to be stupidly OP or utterly useless. And then of course we have a brand new specialist, Zane. He has the airburst launcher, but arguably the best thing about him is his trait. As soon as you get a kill, your health regen will kick into action. So I can definitely see how he's going to be a great assault class for a run and gun playstyle. His launcher on the other hand is similar to Crawford's minigun in that it's very situational. 
I can certainly see how it's going to be fantastic for clearing a choke point, but Spearhead doesn't really lend itself that well to his skill set, in my opinion. Exposure, on the other hand, ooh boy, imagine those air bursts inside those central objectives. Now, on top of that, we've got the new throwing knife and a couple of vault weapons. So content for season three has been comparable to that of the past two seasons. But if you're a new player jumping in who has not experienced the game at all, or even if you played way back on release, you might be pleasantly surprised by the quality of the first three seasons of content that's on offer here. However, this also depends on what kind of a player you are. If you're somebody who is looking for the best Battlefield game on the market, or you heard that this game was akin to Battlefield 4 and you wanted an updated version of that game, then I cannot recommend Battlefield 2042, because this just isn't that. If you're looking for a team-based experience where you actually work together with your fellow squadmates to capture objectives and help keep one another alive, that sort of gameplay is not very strong in Battlefield 2042 either. However, if you've had your fill of the past Battlefield games and you want to give something new a go, there is some fun to be had here. Like I said towards the start of the video, there are still going to be issues. The netcode, at least currently, doesn't feel great. The responsiveness of the game and the mouse input could be a lot better. And there's still a lack of content if you compare it to other Battlefield titles. But Battlefield 2042 is definitely headed in the right direction. Later on in patch 3.2, we'll be getting the class system back again. And whilst this isn't my favorite Battlefield title to date, I'm still having my fair share of fun here. So I do hope DICE continue to improve the game. Now, if you do wish to try out the game and you don't have Game Pass or EA Play, there are free trials coming this December. Those are on screen now for you, so if you're still apprehensive about buying the game, you have an opportunity to check it out first. But tell me guys, how are you getting on in Season 3 so far? Are you enjoying the new content? And how long have you been playing the game for? Let me know below, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you later.